listen, so it's been two, almost seven months now and people are still finding it really hard to uh, use the, the DC Hub. So what I decided to do was to make the screencast. So obviously the first thing you need to do is download an appropriate um, um, client software. In this case, um, 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 I'm actually downloading Apex DC++, which happens to be one of the most widely used DC uh, clients, DC++ clients. Um, um, if you're on Windows, that is. If you're using a different type of operating system, you just want to make sure that you have an um, appropriate uh, piece of software. Uh, so don't mind this. I'm just uh, speeding up, 10 times speed up. Um, I was waiting for my download to actually kind of finish. Uh, so if you're on Linux, obviously, you can just make do with Linux DC++, uh, which is what I, I use myself. Um, um, again, just uh, a little while longer and we should be done with this uh, download, after which I will quickly give a rundown on how to install the piece of software itself on Windows. Okay, so, so Apex D++ has been downloaded and I'm installing it. The usual, right, just double click, yes, next, next, next. The default options are always okay, I guess. Um, uh, right. I guess people are kind of used to this. I mean, everybody has installed software before. For some, for some weird reason, um, my, my version of Windows actually prompted for a restart, which I did. So you're going to have to probably restart if you're going to install uh, Apex DC++, um, which is what, again, I'm just speeding up, 10 times speed up here. Um, don't mind this. Um, um, I'm just kind of waiting for the restart to kind of finalize. Okay, done. Um, so I'm just showcasing what sort of configuration details you'd, you'd specify for uh, Linux DC++. So this is Linux DC++. So things like the name of the hub, which we could give any, any name, any desired name. The hub address, really important. This, this would be the uh, designated uh, DC hub, uh, <coughs> excuse me, DC hub address, which is typically specified in our case. It's uh, list.unza.zm full column 1209, or the actual IP address. The, the, internal UNSA IP address, which is what I'd specified there. And you notice that once I configure those details, um, I can pretty much browse any desired user once I connect to the DC hub and be able to access um, content. So I was just quickly running through this uh, because I was using Linux DC++ and not Apex DC++. Um, but uh, in a short while, I think the restart is done. done. Um, I'm just gonna walk through the same process, but using Apex DC++. So, you notice that the interface is somewhat different um, in comparison to, is different in comparison to Linux DC++, um, no biggie there. Uh, so I'm just uh, firing up the, the interface there. You notice that I, I to, to access um, the configuration details that I need to provide or the settings, I just go to file settings and then um, first thing I do is I specify my nickname. This will be like a username that will appear that other users will get to see if I'm sharing content or once I go online. Um, um, email address could be any desired personal email address associated with your account, obviously. Um, and then a brief description of what other users will see uh, once you come up online. So it could be anything. Like I am an alien or something. Okay, um, and then the most important thing, obviously, uh, well, the, the download specifications are not really that important, just specifying where the downloads are going to end up, um, partial downloads, uh, incomplete downloads, and full downloads. And then the other important thing is specifying the, um, the, the actual hub that you want to connect to. Like in this example, we wish to connect to, um, to the list.unza.zm DC hub. And so what I'm going to do is um, click on that um, star there and you notice that the, the panel that appears has a new button which I just clicked and then within the pop-up window that comes up I specify the name of the hub. This could be anything, this could be a name um, that will easily identify that you want to connect to this particular hub. So you just call it Unza DC hub, that's fine. The hub address um, currently uh, you can connect if you're on the Unza network you can use um, this internal user network address, which is 192.168.99.40. Don't forget the actual port, so you have to 
um, append a full colon 1209. So that's the com complete hub address. Alternatively, if you're connecting off campus, specify list.unza.zm full colon 1209 as a hub address. So you can use either one of the two addresses when you're on the UNSA network, but when you're outside of the UNSA network, you want to specify the list.unza.zm full colon 1209 address. Um, of course, there's a slew of other hub addresses out there. So what you could do is just um, add a new connection and specify hub addresses for those particular DC hubs that you wish to connect to. Right. Um, Okay, and then the, the other thing here is uh, there are certain times when, um, even when you're on the user network, you might be unable to connect to the hub if you use um, the 192.168.99.40 for column 1209 address. What you want to do is just kind of interchange it with the um, actual canonical name, which is the name, domain name, so alternate the actual IP address with list.unza.zm for column 1209. That tends to work. Um, and if the list.unza.zm doesn't work, then you use the IP address, right? Um, okay, uh, so I'm just going to connect just to showcase exactly how Apex DC plus the Apex DC plus plus client kind of works once you successfully connect to a DC hub. Um, uh, in a short while, let me just finish typing this just in case people would want to refer back to what I was ranting about previously. So like I said, if you're on a different network, like if you're using um, Airtel MT network, you specify the uh, list.unza.zm address. Um, but if you're on the UNSA network, you can just use the IP address. Okay, so I'm, I'm speeding up again here. Um, bear with me. Uh, and I was actually, just for those that are interested, I just decided to include a static window here, just make sure that this information is kind of um, available over a prolonged period of time. Um, and incidentally, uh, I was creating this screencast, um, when I was creating this screencast, somebody uh, came through, so I had to uh, fast forward this particular part of the, of the screencast. It should be done shortly. Again, uh, when it comes to the address, what's really important is that you specify both the IP address and the port, the port uh, for the lease DC hub is 1209. Um, so the, the address um, is, is in fact a combination of the IP address and the port, um, and the two parts are separated uh, by a full colon, or the actual name list.unza.zm and the port as well. Um, all right, so we're done there. Uh, just showcase, uh, I'm just going to attempt to connect using the IP address because I'm on the UNSA network right now. Um, so uh, that's the IP address there, 192.168.99.40, full colon 1209. Again, that's a full address. Description of the hub would be like anything that will easily enable you to uh, identify this hub. And this is really important because you might have, uh, you might be connecting to a whole range of uh, DC hub addresses. So once I'm done with that, I connect and boom, there we go. We are connected and notice the, the timestamp with um, uh, descriptive information about the hub that comes up, pops up. And then on the right panel here, you see a slew of uh, users. So I'll right click on that user micro DC hub tool under bar UNSA um, to attempt to browse content associated with that uh, particular user. And this is how you, you, this is one easy way of trying to gain access to content um, being hosted by a specific user. So you just right click the username and then you browse the content, which is what I just did. Uh, alternatively, what you can do is you can search the entire hub because content is indexed, obviously, um, um, uh, and, and then you'd gain access to, to, to content by clicking through the search results that appear. Right? And similar to what happens when you're searching using a search engine like Google, for instance. Okay, so um, I'm just attempting to browse for the user. You notice the panel right below there, there's the user name and the hub segment, hub sh segment sh showcasing um, um, that I'm attempting to connect to this. So for some, for some weird reason, there's a bit of an issue there. Um, so what I'm going to do is just briefly uh, attempt to reconnect to the hub, um, at which point I think I should be able to gain access to content by that user, right? Um, again, attempt to see if this is gonna work, probably not. Uh, Go to file and then just 
attempt to reconnect. Okay, and then once I reconnect, you notice that boom. So this is the content being hosted by MicroDC2 uh, under Bar Unza, and I can literally uh, you know, browse through the different directories that are being hosted by this user. So this user happens to have uh, documents, their, their software, their game, um, uh, Qt Spim, um, some also the, these tools that we're using in class, ICT 11.10 class. Um, and then I'll give you an example of how to download Qt Spim. So you just right click the file you're interested in and then you download. And then you notice that the download and the status says downloading and it's pretty fast. Um, 4.45 um, mega, megabits, or is it megabytes per second? So which is it's pretty fast because I'm on the same network. And then once I'm done, I, I actually uh, go to the location of where my downloads are, which is in my case, use ICT 11.10 downloads. So I go to that location to gain access to the um, file that I would have downloaded in this case. Um, so you notice once I go into uh, downloads, there we go, I've just downloaded Qt Spim. So not really that hard, right? Um, so here's to hoping a lot more people are going to finally um, start using the DC Hub and more importantly, will start sharing content uh, themselves. We don't want people who are just leeching um, from the Hub. All right.